Okay, so today, carrying on with the auto generation uh, for a lot of things based on XML spec files that are currently in the docs. Last time I did uh, cleanup, generation, generating cleanup functions for complex and non, yeah, basically complex types. I have externally held memory or other more interesting subtypes in line. Today, I'm going to be doing the same thing for comparison functions, because uh, first of all, having a deep uh, comparison function is kind of a good idea, but I actually have a use case for it already. And that is for when reading and writing to basically serializing to something else, whether it's binary or YAML, uh, you want to be able to do send and receive as little data as possible, right? Now you can also do, you know, you can obviously run, com do compression, decompression, but it's also great. You can still do compression, decompression while having a smaller original data set as well. Now, uh, what I already have here are four YAML for, for a number of uh, um, functions, when, uh, especially when writing. I can do a comparison for, of the data I'm writing to, let's say, a default, an original set of data, and only write the data out if it's different. You know, so I can save some data, or have saved myself from having to write some data. Um, and it doesn't look like I don't. I actually do it for complex types. Uh, it's optional, optional, optional. Those are all basic types. Um, and I want to be able to, basically what I would have is the compare functions would be for the complex types, such as, you know, VKE, descriptor set, layout binding, where you say like, you know, if they, if these, or a subtype or some other complex, non-trivial type is different all the way through and do a deep comparison too, not just the data that's like in line, but also like any pointer, any items it has pointers to. Go into, like, if the pointers aren't the same, go into them and make sure that they are also, also the same. And then return if they are or not. Um, so I could probably just double check. I think I have maybe material. Uh, right. I just write the full thing if it's that. Hmm. Regardless of, yeah. What about mesh? Uh, where's the rights? There we are. Just it just writes all the stuff all the time. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Yeah. So this time I needed comparison functions. So let's start, I guess. Uh, to begin with is compare dot pi. <clears throat> Grab the very starting bits, basically all of this. Uh, I do have some is complex type. Yeah, I okay. These are two functions I need to have for both, so I need to put them into a, like a. Uh, common no common's probably too. Um, Would it be doc common dot python something like that? I think. Okay, um, it's not a Python file by itself, so it's import um, sys because I need to do sys exit. That's the only one I can think of. Just kind of slap these two functions into there. Anything else I require? Et no, because that's integrated into the type itself. So I have those two. I need to import just common doc common. I guess is that enough? That's enough, I guess. I'll have that. So it's doc dot that. Format 
that, please. Thank you. I'll just save that. Call Mac. Yeah. Okay. And import dog common. I believe it's going to be so the setup will be basically the same. We're going to be reading the XMLs. We're going to check if we read anything, and then we get down to this. Here we check for the header declaration. Okay, so this. Get down to main. Hmm. Okay, so first of all, if, if. So it's going to be what? Compare. Compare type. That okay, it's built, these are going to be consts. P data, I don't know, one. New line, const star p data two, something like that. I think that'll work. Uh, we've got the function macros at the start, we've got the type, we exit out. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and we find the type, make sure it's a struct type, and then we get down to the content stream. So do that. And then we go through the, the this, which doesn't have to be reversed this time either. Where are we interested in internal? We're not interested in internal. Simplify, we got a member name. Do we care about control members? Control members are, do we? I mean, I guess, I guess I could do that. You know what, I will, okay, so what I want to do is establish establish the control members. Control members are members that control whether or not something else is written or how many. So, for example, uh, I'm trying to think of one. The Build API struct. This, for example, this. This is a control member because this is determining how many of animations are in an array. So, like, you know, the, the ability to read and write to determine this is controlled primarily by this. That's a control member. And I imagine there'll be other cases where I have like booleans for controlling multiple other members or something like that. So I want to make sure I'm counting this. I'm comparing this before I compare this. Because this will determine if I even go to... Because this is... Because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because comparing two integers is almost always going to be significantly cheaper than going ahead and you know going checking... I mean, if the pointers are the same, then it's just, you know it's cheap as well. But if I have to go into if the pointers aren't the same, and I have to go and actually compare, like go to that memory location and compare the data, two sets of data, that is almost always going to be more expensive than just checking this first. If I can, you know, save time on the more expensive operation with the cheaper operation, do that. So I need to first of all make sure, and I can't. I also can't uh, guarantee, like that's say that the um, control members before something. It may be afterwards. So I want to make sure that as part of this, I make sure I grab all the control members first, make sure those are compared first, and then do heavier stuff afterwards. So, <clears throat> that's probably a terrible explanation, but hell, whatever. Member name equals member dot find name do 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 Doing that. 
if length in member dot attribute. If if length is a member attribute, then I want to make sure that I added the control members. Append get length. Do I have another one? Optional. No, I don't really have optional anymore. It's just this. This is the only control member I have, but I also want to make sure that I have a unique set, just in case like uh, multiple pointer pointer items are all. If a control member controls like more than one other member within the, the structure, basically. I need it to be a list, and I need it to be a dictionary, because dictionaries are going to be unique key members from keys of control members. That sh should work. So print, and print that. And what I want to do is tools, uh, structs, compare. Dash dash XML. There is back to test and type for example uh, complex type. Cute. Fail to find for example complex type. Okay. Complex struct. One member, even though that length member is used by one, two, three, four sub uh, other members. So that's pretty much what I'm looking for. Because if I didn't have this, <clears throat> I'd then be like comparing the same thing like four times, which is not not what I want. Got to do now. We're actually doing the the uh, so it's content string equals empty string, and we've got to go for member blah blah blah. We want to go through grab the member name. We want to see if it matches what we have in control members. In control members. Then we're going to process it. Plus equals process member, which is going to be what member member and the member name. Do I need to pass in anything else? I don't think so. Okay, <clears throat> define. an empty string so it'll be doing control members then we're going to be doing process regular members and again it's all but the uh, internal only so If this, then skip it. Otherwise, I'm going to be doing this. And then at the very end, we're going to be doing print multi line dot format stuff. Okay. We going to have. First thing is going to be the function macros. In 
case if there's any kind of weird stuff going on with that. We are, it's a Boolean. It's, oh, um, I already do function macro stuff, right? Make sure, yeah, yeah, make sure. Make sure there's a space if it exists. Compare, type. that up, do whatever, up to there. Um, we're going to have, let's say, the content, and then one, two, three, four, return true. So we got that, we got the uh, type, and then we got the string. Okay. Now I need to do the member processing. Let's see what I can grab out of here. Do I have anything in here I can really use? Not really. Yes, I do actually right here. Type equals member find type, type name, prefix, suffix, great. It's all very useful stuff. So one of the first things I want to have for this is that for each member I want to have like a you know just a little thing that's like that uh, and it goes on like type dash member name something like that at the beginning of each comparison section so it's really obvious what's happening I mean this isn't really meant to be human modifiable. So, I mean, because it is auto-generated, but still being able to read it is still of some importance. And quickly, like, figuring out where... Uh, it's just nice. It's just nice. <clears throat> so, let's see. Figure out... Layout of the starting comment. Got a return string, which is going to be... Because it's only one string, yes. So, it equals this. It's like that. One, two, three, four. That. We have the prefix, type name, suffix, member name. We also want to do if. There's a length. I want to add that in like square brackets afterwards. Like that, I guess. Yeah. Simple quotes. Okay, and then we got to do so. Um, so returning ooh, that's not great. Type because remember dot find type type dot text type name prefix suffix. Suffix name, member name. Okay, member name is incorrect. Dot text. Okay, this doesn't actually do anything here. Uh, 
Uh, so what I'm looking for? Content string plus equals a new line. Or, yeah, let's just do that. Something like that. So yeah, it'll be, so each comparison section will kind of be start with that. With, uh, the type and the length member, yeah. Okay, uh, the types, the types, the types. If, okay, yeah, if it's greater than one, I'm not even bothering. Double pointer in direction is not supported. That continues to be true. So this is um, I need to do so I'm comparing pointer members so I need to first of all need to see if they're not the same if they're both null pointer then they're both the same yeah okay no if the data one um, member name not equal to data two member name we're in then we need to see if either of them are null or yeah because I want to see if they're null and then I want to do comparison if they're both not null I just know that they're that they're not the same if they were both null I wouldn't even be in here so it's either that they both point to real or one of them is null. So if I just want to eliminate that one possibility of data. Or turn false. Otherwise we're going down to the comparison point the format. And then we're going to go into the point where we're doing comparison. Okay, if uh, common doc or doc common common doc doc common. Dot is complex type. Uh, okay. Then the comparison function is no, it's not that. It's comic XML spec roots too. Too deep. Well, compare uh, the type. One. Member name, key data two. Member name. Turn false. Name, member name, otherwise, hold on. It's in 
inside of here. Otherwise, it's a much simpler affair where it's, lit where it's just um, back one if p data one. I could just do a straight up comparison like that. Then I want to, on the way out of the fret string, I just want to plus equals one, two, three, four. Close that up, new line. Okay. That's for external pointer members. Oh, I don't have. String. I gotta still do strings. Strings are a special case of this. I can't do a compare underscore of a string and I can't do that. Okay, so if types count equals one and um, it's a char character array and member dot length is null terminated and it's a string which means I am going to do a special case it's going to be Because, I mean, what, what's going on right now? Yeah, okay, close that up. What have I got so far? Yeah, that's definitely not happening. That's fine. Okay. I need to do this. No. Back up, we're one deep. If data one but equals p data two. Or e data one is null, or p data two is null, or string compare. is not zero, then return false. Definitely do that. Check they're not the same, check if for null if nulls, and then check if if they're so at this point they're both real things, point to somewhere, make sure they're not actually the same. Return false. Somewhere will be. I have a string, right? I guess I don't actually have one in here. Don't like. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Interesting. I want to have at least one member that's a string, null terminated string, please. P string blah, blah 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 length equals. Oh, don't save that. Type.
There we go. Yes, 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 yes. Very nice. Okay. This opening is correct. This is somewhat correct. If no, no, if member dot length get length. If there's a length to this, if it's a multi-item. Otherwise, do this. One over, one over, one over, one over. If it's yeah. Return the string. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, before we're eight in four. Size T equals zero. I have less than T data one of the control member, which is zero. That plus I. Close that up. We go into that. Ooh, uh, member dot get length. Then we got to do this. Can I do a copy paste? Uh, almost. I can almost do a copy paste. Uh, because it's not going to be this. If not compare that plus the offset into the array, plus the offset. And offset into the array and offset into the array. So I can't merge this any better than this, I think. Okay, so this was the multi member, right? For, oh, almost. So further, further, further in, further in, further in, further in, that, that, that. And then at the end of this, Plus equals one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that new line. There we go. Do we want an extra new line? No, nope, not there, but here. This was the VK stuff, which complex, yeah, whatever. There we go, the complex one. Uh, not compare that. Yes, yes. Single, single. Okay. Okay, so that's all that stuff. Now I need to deal with elif. Is it elif? Just else. Inline data. And then I gotta do the if doc whatever again thing right here. Back up by one, back up by one, back up by one. Okay. This is in line, so that needs to be and, an and for a pointer to each. And then this is just a direct comparison right in, right in the spot. Right, one, two, three, four. Why are these deeper? Are these deeper than they have to be? I think so, yeah. Move by one. Okay, let's see what we got, the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. 
You know, there's some probably some way to kind of compact all these a bit more, but I, hmm. it'd be a non-trivial affair, and most likely the compiler will be doing a good job of it anyways. Most likely. Plus, this is a fairly rare operation, so does do I really care that much? It's really exceedingly rare because this is almost exclusively used when. Um, transporting, in, you know, exporting data, basically, whether across the network or to a file or something like that. That's a fairly rare operation in the grand scheme of things. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be too bothered about the slightly more verboseness of these files. If it's a reference, yeah. Okay, I think so. I think so. So with those, I want to add a git ignore to here. Or I can just do it to the bottom, right? Uh, it's uh, always like named that. I'll just add it to the root. So I'll stage those, don't lose those quite yet. And then I want to go through and do generate code here. Except for go, that was the cleanup. Maybe I do this head cleanup. That. Yeah, that'll work. And here I'm doing compare. So that was clean up. This is compare. Make code gen. That should give us another couple of files. So we've got the compare header, which we probably want an extra new line between each. It was to clean up that. Hmm. Okay, for now. Do an echo. To the compare section, I'll add. Um, I'll retrofit it into the cleanup section later. So that works there. That's there. I need standard bool. That shouldn't be void either. Header, the header, the declaration should be a bool. Bool, bool, do, 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 do. You're going to be fine when I add you to. Make 
fast. Okay. String compare. That'll be under string H, right? Yeah. So add that here. Okay. I guess it just kind of carry on and do it for the others too. So we've got tools here for generate code. Got all that. Clean up files. Copy those here. Compare, compare. Mm, yeah, that'd be right. I need to include that. If I need, I don't think I need those. I don't need this either. I won't need that. I'll probably need BK struct compare though. string to compare with? I don't I don't think so. Compare. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, move that bit from there, put that there instead. That'll make the most sense. So it'll like start there, then it'll add a new line, and then it'll go into the stuff. That makes more sense. Into here, we're going to have compare.c. That didn't work out. It's not a complex, it's not a complex type. Oh. Right. Which so the complex type works fine for the compare uh the cleanup. But it's not gonna work for compare. Compare just needs to be any type of struct. So I need a slight variation on this, which is not based on this or this, it's just if it's a struct. Is it a struct? Who knows? If type category is basically that in return true, right? Yeah. Just that. So we've got the kind of compare. We want to make sure if it is a struct type. Close those to the right. Mm, close. Yeah, okay, that's better. Now we have this is just not being included, I guess. I just haven't made use of it. 
UK Strike to clean up, yeah. that one uh, now we're going to do this I'm I swear I already have compare no 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 I just don't okay I thought I had comparison for these things oh I had cleanup I just got rid of them all guys I'm just I'm just plain old writing or reading the whole thing I'm not actually doing any real interesting comparisons right now Compare. Okay. Uh, standard bool. I didn't actually add the type yet. Fair to get up. See how well that's going to work. It's going to work. Uh, yep. Okay, okay, okay. So that's just the, yeah. Those are some deep comparisons. Okay. Are there any other types? I really want to do this to the... Position component 3D? No. I mean, I could eventually but i don't really want, need it right now because i'm bulldozing my way to the, the read and write yaml and binary actually no then i would need it because i'm going to have to read and write position types i don't need a cleanup for this because it's all inline and trivial but for uh, string uh encoding I will need comparison. Okay, add them. So, going to be doing, whoop, nope, 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 nope. One line, come on, that's all I got out of this, come on. Yeah, cleanup files are going away. 
compare. It's not that, it's not that, it's just what? Three, just whatever this is. That. That's it, okay. <laughs> just for the whole thing, because again, they're, all the headers are all going to be coming together eventually. Can this be... This cannot be C because of the GLM, which is a C++ only thing. Neither can that. That has to be... Dang. Okay. Mm, yeah, I can't do that because of the type. Um, oh. no, 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 it can be uh, C still, at least the header, the header can still be that, because I'm not, I'm not interfacing with the GLM itself, it just has to be the source, yes, okay, that, okay, we got, go into... Uh, foe position compare, just like that, include, uh, we need string.h for regular string compares, if there were any, of which there are not, so I actually get rid of it. And then I need to do, I need to add an auxiliary target for that, which is going to look like that. What's different about this? Oh, yeah, that. Uh, I'm in a different location. Hmm. <sighs> I gotta go back to directories. Yeah. Here to full position to libs. Okay, yeah, and then back one more. So that brings me that, which means I can add that here. that in the future and then we want to do okay let me just yeah and I got to do physics which 
probably going to be something similar. So we've got two types, this and a collision type resource. Okay, this is actually using a completely incorrect um, Go physics export. Uh, this one needed It's also going to mean that I need to include the headers that include these macros. I don't know if I even included it here. No, I got that. So those are probably still correct. I'll, f I'll figure it out in a second. Close that out. Physics, generate code. Make sure I can actually run it. Here we're doing compare, which is going to be after this one. Is there actually anything I need? That's a float, that's some other type, that's fine. Okay, this can actually be a C, pretty sure. down here, compare C, physics export, physics compare, physics component, which is rigid body. as well. Am I doing anything else? I don't think so. Hmm. That didn't work. Because I don't actually, I need the file to exist first. <laughs> Almost. Collision shape, create info, HPP. Ah, so it does actually need to be C. Plus, plus. Um, Oh no, if this if that's okay, exactly. If this is the case here, then I need to do the function macro where I export C. That's why um It's 
all part of the plan. Right? You gonna give it to me? No, but you went there. So half, ha halfway there. And then I need to do the same thing. Okay. Why do you not? Physics resource. Collision shape create info. H. Right, right, it's HPP. Getting better. Export C. Am I crazy? Did I do something wrong? Is extra is it externcy? Did I do that? Externcy. Yeah. Export C. Ah. And there you there we go. Okay. That's so I need to do function macros here. Add it here. Lovely. So th it's that physics. Are there any other libraries I'm missing? Graphic resource, BK physics, position resource. Doesn't have any of the stuff we're looking at here. Neither does foe. Okay. So that should be basically that. Just want to add some slight changes to those. These are all code. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to do a bit of a more in-depth uh, check warnings. I want to add all the warnings. All the warnings. Tell me about any warnings about all the stuff I'm generating here. So we do that. Start going through, oh my god, no, 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 we're not doing everything like that. We'll just do that quickly. I just, I just want to isolate just down to the files that I'm operating on, rather than everything. So we get through all this, which is surprisingly, there's still some. But not as many as they used to be, for sure. We'll do that. Then we go through the files that I actually modified. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, BK struct, I don't care. Translator, okay. That's I haven't done YAML yet. I haven't done YAML yet. Okay, yeah. That's a lot of terrible screw up on my part. Wait, 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 the files I actually modified just aren't even here, are, or, or, no, compares there. No warnings, no advanced warnings. There, this is a BK struct. There's a lot of BK struct. Okay, I guess I'm pretty much all in the clear on this stuff so far. So... I think I'll call it with that. So first of all, get commit. Uh, that'll be, so these items are documentation things. So I'll put them into there. 
And otherwise, I've got the stuff to compare, which is, I don't know. Yeah, it's not even. Good commit. Okay, great. Um, Morning, do not modify this automatically generate. Yeah, okay. Having portable, portable, deep data comparisons is essential, especially for And automatically generate the comparison functions. There's not really much I need to say about it. Okay, that's just it. That's just it right there. Bam. Get rebase a couple. So we'll put the doc f stuff into the work in progress docs. So it's just the docs. And that's that. First of all, uh, and of course, does it actually work? Does the whole program, I haven't actually yet put any, hooked any of this stuff in. So yeah, the actual main program should still work. Right. Hopefully with not too much in the way of uh, memory leaks. Yeah, nothing of my uh, doing. So yeah, that's automatically generating. That's autogen of comparison functions. And that's it for today. So until next time, cheers.